Today's video is sponsored by Prime Gaming, the service that gives you a rotating stock of free games and in-game items as part of your Amazon Prime subscription. Later this month, they're celebrating Prime Day, giving away a bunch of really cool titles. Stay tuned till later in the video to learn more. Too many games exist. That is the conclusion that I've come to after recently playing Rain World for the very first time. It's hard enough to keep up with all of the big budget AAA games every year. When you add indies into the mix, it is literally impossible. Uh, <laughs> that's the only explanation I have come to for how I somehow managed to miss this gem of a game. Rain World is challenging, oppressive, and frustrating, yes, but at the same time, it is one of the most interesting, immersive, and memorable worlds that I've had the pleasure of experiencing. I know it is a 2D pixel art game, but don't judge a book by its cover, especially this one, and trust me when I tell you that this is a fantastic game that more people need to play, more people should play, but probably won't, and even many of those who do may not even make it that far for reasons we'll get into later. You know, when Rain World launched back in 2017, it was one of those games that most critics absolutely hated. GameSpot said, an endearingly designed creature and a captivating world in ruins cannot save this 2D platformer from its punishing gameplay. According to Polygon, with the core systems opaque and unnecessarily limited, all I ever felt equipped to do in Rain World was fail. And to wrap it up, IGN said, beautiful environments incredible animations and enticingly hazy mechanics are fantastic, but the sheer cruelty of how it's pieced out to the player transcends challenge and becomes an unwanted trial. Now, while professional reviewers found this game to be overly difficult and frustrating, user reviews swung in the opposite direction. Every place you look, be it Metacritic, the forums, Steam reviews, anywhere on social media, whenever this game is brought up, it is overwhelmingly with praise. Players absolutely adore this game. So what's the disconnect? Why did many critics and major outlets score Rain World around a five out of 10, but user reviews are overwhelmingly positive? Too many games exist, and the game is the antithesis of the review process. I've done a lot of things here on my YouTube channel, commentary, let's plays, news, guides, lists, and on and off over the years, I've also done reviews. The thing about reviewing games for release is it sucks. I mean, it is a pretty shit experience. If you're like most YouTube reviewers or review outlets a la IGN and GameSpot, you want to have a review up for when the embargo lifts. Being on time for this sort of thing is pretty important if you're hoping to get clicks and views. While there are some reviewers who exist out outside of that bubble and can post their impressions whenever, be it days, weeks, or months after launch, most everyone else is in a race to get their thoughts out on a game as soon as possible. And many times, depending on the publisher and the game, you might not even get a review code until just a few days before launch, which means if you're looking to hit embargo, which like I said, many are, you'll have to rush through the game, form an opinion quickly, get it on paper, and if you're a YouTuber, you'll also have to make a video on top of that. In some instances, for reviews that I've done in the past, I've had like 48 or 24 hours even to get this whole thing done, and it is really rough. But even without the pressure of uh, a, a review to finish for an embargo, a lot of reviewers are just pressed for time in general, because like I said, too many games exist. There is a lot on people's plates. So when an indie game falls into a reviewer's lap, well, let's just say I wouldn't be surprised if many critics just want to get it over with. Now, Rain World launched in March 2017. Let's take a look at what else came out that month. There was Breath of the Wild, Near Automata, Ghost Recon Wildlands, Mass Effect Andromeda, and the Nintendo Switch came out that month. There was a lot going on in gaming, as well as some really good AAA titles. So I think it's a fair assumption that for these big outlets, a Rain World review was at the bottom of their priority list. And really, they probably weren't that interested in giving it uh, the time of day that it really needed. They just wanted to get it over with and see the game to the end so they can publish their review. However, the issue here and what actually makes Rain World special is it severely punishes the mentality of rushing and just trying to see it through to the end. This game encourages slow, methodical exploration, feeling out your surroundings, looking for exits, places to climb and hide, and searching out for dangers. But even if you're super careful, it is incredibly brutal. Danger is everywhere. You play as a slug cat with the exception of these flies here. You are at the very bottom of the food chain in the 
this world. It is infested with lizards who can kill you in a single bite. Massive vulture-like birds that will swoop in out of nowhere, scoop you up, and carry you off into the sky. Jellyfish who will zap and tangle you up underwater. They are these creepy centipedes that lurk in dark places. You'll only catch glimpse of these by some of the bioluminescent creatures in the environment. Carnivorous plants that masquerade as poles. When you grab onto them, you get sucked into a hole. There are eels who will swarm you and push you down, pecking you further and further until you drown. There's even this massive octopus thing. There are these guys who skulk around that kind of like a lethal version of Gollum. Everything can and wants to kill you. Now you couple that with these periodic rainstorms, not the haha cute kind of tickles sort of rain, more like a tsunami concentrated into a tight area and dumped on your forehead sort of rain. The only way to survive these regularly occurring storms is by finding one of these self-locking tiny rooms, which only even close up if you manage to find enough food and store up the proper amount of pips. Uh, this game does give you some tools to deal with these dangers, but even then it only takes you so far. Pulling up your map will show you where the next storm and when it is imminent, basically, at which point you can search for the nearest shelter that you've discovered or try to find a new one. I would say, except for when you very first start playing, you really shouldn't be getting caught out in the storms all too often, but that can happen even after you've played quite a while. You might be out exploring and not paying attention, and then all of a sudden you see that the storm's coming in and you're too far away from a shelter to get there in time. Or maybe you do get to the shelter in time, but in your exploration, didn't find enough food, and so the shelter doors weren't closed, at which point, well, you can guess what's gonna happen. And as for dealing with the creatures, the deadly inhabitants of this world, you can engage and fight them, but it's not a cakewalk either. You will find spears and debris in the environment that can be hurled at enemies as offensive weapons. If you do this enough times, you'll be able to kill pretty much everything. There are some enemies that require explosives, which you will find on the rare occasion. Trying to memorize these locations is a good idea. But a lot of times, in order to actually kill anything, you need to recollect the rock and spear that you threw at them from their body. Like, the spear will be impaled, and if they're not any around, you gotta run up to them, which puts you dangerously close to their mouth. So, in most circumstances, it's actually best to just run and hide. But this is where things get really interesting with this game. It's a lot more difficult to just run and hide and go into these different rooms, because you basically never know where enemies are gonna show up. This isn't one of those 2D games where every area has, like, like set enemies that will always be there spawning and pathing at the exact same locations. No, instead the game has this system of AI where creatures do their own thing constantly. When you boil it down, Rain World is meant to emulate a living, breathing ecosystem and it does it very well. Lizards may infest a room on one pass through, but then if you die and respawn and have to go through that area again, they might be nowhere to be found. And then maybe you head a few rooms over and you see one of those lizards, but now it's fighting a vulture. Or maybe two lizards got mad at each other and started fighting. Don't let the appearance fool you. The AI in this game is very impressive. It has actually been lauded for its implementation. There's a really great in-depth video on this by H2. I will link that below, but let me give you some of the highlights here. Every single creature in the game has its own set of behaviors and interactions as a base. Characters and creatures will also have their own different temperaments and personalities. Now, when you combine this with the world, other creatures, and then the play, all of it results in a much deeper and more complex output that makes the whole thing feel very organic. And this is all in service of that premise of representing an ecosystem and a predator and prey relationship. Even the most basic enemy type in the game, which are these lizards, have their own interesting amount of interactions. Some lizards are territorial, fighting others that get in their way. Some will fight over food to the point where a lizard could grab you, but if you wait long enough, maybe another lizard comes along, tries to uh, steal you, and they get in a fight and you can escape. Every lizard will have its own behaviors, abilities, and aggression levels because there are different types of lizards. Again, there are also personal differences between the lizards. There are these pack lizards that will coordinate and try to flank you as you're looking to escape, but if you manage to kill their leader, then the pack loses that coordination. And again, all creature types have their own unique behaviors similar to this. The most impressive of them all, though, being the scavengers, these humanoid creatures that I said kind of look like Gollum. They have many of their own attributes attributes. You could help fend off a creature if one of them's in a fight, and then they will become your friend, following you around and helping you. If you act too aggressively, if you run at one of these with a spear, they might throw something 
at you as a warning, and if you keep it up, they then might try to kill you. Some scavengers will be more cantankerous than others, some will be more passive. If you give them gifts, they might let you pass a checkpoint. They also have this communication system using facial expressions and movement to speak to each other and work together. The list of interesting behaviors with this creature goes on and on. All of this is constantly happening in the background. Creatures hunting, hiding, chasing, going about their own motivations, independent of whatever it is that you're doing. When playing Rain World, you will stumble into these encounters that are always changing, always different all the time. And it really plays a massive role in making this game kind of feel alive in the way that it does. Now, again, check out that video about this game's AI. I will link that below. It goes into a much more detailed explanation of the various AI systems and what is so impressive about it. After watching that video, it really made me appreciate everything that I was experiencing in the game. All in all, I would say that yes, uh, Rain World is brutal. It is a game that boils down to exploration and survival. And just like out in the real wilderness, surviving can be very difficult. That coupled with the movement system that I will admit feels very clunky when you first get started. And I think this will definitely put some people off. And I also think it's a large part of the reason why the reviewers really didn't like this game very much. But it's also something that gets infinitely better when you put in the time. In fact, this game has a rather in-depth with many, many layers to it movement system. The community has put out various documents, spreadsheets, and videos detailing how in-depth the movement system. It's, it's one of those things that's it's kind of like learning to ride a bike, right? If you first start out, you're not going to do very well. You'll fall off quite a bit. But once you learn that how things work and how to properly balance yourself, you can then cruise for miles. Rain World is one of those games where once you understand the mechanics of the movement system, you can just be blitzing through these levels. But at first, yes, it feels really sluggish. Maybe fitting, though, because you are playing as a slug with a cat's face. So uh, honestly, yeah, I do think this is where a lot of those early critic reviews kind of lost the thread on this game. Without their training wheels, uh, they never quite got the bike spinning. That plus the oppressive reins and the fact that everything in the world wants to kill you, they fell off but never got back on. And frankly, it's their loss as far as I'm concerned because this really is something special. I am so glad that I found and gave the time to Rain world and tried it out for myself. Had I just relied on what I read and watched from those early critic reviews back in 2017, I would have missed out on this fantastic indie game. I was also very pleased to learn recently that they have an expansion coming out uh, some five years after launch. They're going to be putting out a pretty massive update that's going to add new locations with thousands of new rooms, they say. There will be five additional playable characters, which have different uh, kind of functionality, different move sets, if you will. There's also going to be the addition of a challenge mode and a safari mode. Pretty cool. I mean, I'm just, I'm honestly tickled that I uh, took the time and played this game because it's really, really great. Rain World, I love it. It's tough. It is. It's really tough. But at the same time, it is very rewarding if you can push through that early frustration, if you can get comfortable with the movement and dealing with the onslaught of death, there is really a great game here to be discovered. So yeah, too many games exist but I am glad that I got to experience this one. Before we wrap up this video, I just want to give another thank you and shout out to Prime Gaming for sponsoring this. Uh, the service, pretty straightforward. If you have Amazon Prime subscription, Prime Gaming gives you a host of rotating free games and in-game items to collect. If you head over to gaming.amazon.com, sign in with your Prime account, you can get access to games currently like Rain World, Serial Cleaner, Gone Viral, Metal Unit, and there's a bunch of other indies. And then on Prime Day on July 12th and 13th, they're going to be adding a bunch of AAA games, including the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, Star Wars Republic Commando, Need for Speed Heat, Grid Legends, and Star Wars Jedi Knight 1 and 2, Jedi Academy, and Jedi Outcast. So if you're interested in learning more about Prime Gaming, go ahead and check out the link in the description below. And with that, we will wrap up today's video. Uh, I, you know, I don't, there are so many games out there, uh, like has been a, a recurring thread in this video. There's just a lot of games out there, and I don't always get the time to even play all of the big games, but I, I really wanted to check this out because I had over the years continued to hear really good things about it. And I'm so glad I did. If you get the chance to check out Rain World, I do really think you should. Thank you as always for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.